Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm super happy because I think I have a solution for one of my van life issues. Now, you might recall this. Now I encourage you guys to turn on your van at least once per day, every day, just to make sure everything's running correctly. Um, when I did, I was having a little bit of a battery starting issue. Now this is the second time on this trip that this has happened, which leads me to believe that my battery is draining a little bit faster than it should. And that could be for a variety of reasons. Um, I did have this happen at the very beginning of my trip whenever I was still in Texas, and my dad had to like supercharge it to get it going again now this time it did go ahead and turn over but it took it a minute and it thought about it let me tell you so I think what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually going to move the van so the nose points out that way that way in case I do need a jump it'll be a little bit easier than back in this cubby that we're in now it could happen still within this cubby but it's gonna be a bit harder so we're about to move the van and I went ahead and moved some of our things so I won't be like in them so uh, that's what we're doing right now is just uh, finding a good way to turn around. Now, as you can see, that's not super convenient considering we're on the road in our van. And I've tested several things, but I still don't have a clear cut solution as to what's going on. But one thing I do know is that I need to be able to go down the road safely and not have to worry about the van not turning over because of some weirdness that's going on. Now, I could replace the battery, and that is still something that I'm considering in the future, but it hasn't been doing it, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on. So I decided to safeguard myself in a way that um, is a little bit more responsible and smart. We're doing the troubleshooting option, and um, this is my conclusion. This box, this box right here, this box is hopefully going to be a solution for our problem but let me show you what I have that I'm going to be taking with me as I take on the road once again and what I'm hoping will be helpful should this incident ever happen again the box within a box is actually something from a door trip this is a jump starter and built-in air compressor now I have an air compressor that I was traveling with but this will eliminate two things out of my van and give me a third thing so currently I am carrying jumper cables and then also I am carrying the air compressor which take up quite a bit of room but this has the ability to jump start my van without having to uh, have quite as much stuff so let's look inside the box but before we do I have used something very similar to this previous in fact last year almost one calendar year from this day I was at gutted on that week of gutted there were so many things that were happening but one of the things that happened were a lot of people were sitting still for those full five days with the beaming sun rays coming down on them and there were several people as a result of not starting their vans who needed to jump later on so so oh, this was something that I had seen previously, but I was kind of processing, do I need this? Do I want this? And then when Dimples here started doing the weird stuff, I was like, absolutely sign me up. So inside the box we go and um, we're going to be pulling out something pretty epic. Now, I love good packaging and I think it's really good that they've used this bubble wrap that kind of wraps around the unit itself to keep it nice and safeguarded. That makes me feel nice and protected as the person receiving this. But also below here, you'll notice that there's something too. We're gonna set this down, come back to that. We're gonna start addressing this guy first because this is the meat and potatoes of, of what's in this box and ultimately what will be our solution. In we go. Ooh, that's kind of satisfying. Ugh, 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 there we go. And out comes this. This little thing right here is tiny but mighty. So one of the things that I was really looking for was something that I could use that wouldn't take up a lot of room. Now, whenever I was at base camp, I told you in that video before that my dad had to kind of give me like a supercharged jump. Well, that took a lot. And the unit that he used was basically the size of what my front seat used to be. Clearly, I can't carry that around in the van. So I needed something 
smaller. Enter this guy right here. This is the unit that we're going to be bringing with us going forward and um, I'm kind of excited about this because it has a lot of different features that typically aren't included in these. Typically you have either a jumper or a compressor but not together. Okay we have a power button here. There is a display gauge on the front where you can adjust it and so let's just kind of turn it on and see what happens. Ha! Huh. Nothing yet, but it's brand new out of the box, so I kind of expected that. Oh wait, there's also a power button here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. See, it's just about exploring the different buttons and seeing what happens. Now, typically I go ahead and read the manual before playing with one of these, but today I thought we'd just wing it and then we'll dive into the manual after. Looks like we have two USBs here. This is where we're going to charge it through this port right here. And then we have a display readout of how charged it really is. Now on this, you can't really see it on the camera. It doesn't capture it as well on the screen, but it says it's about 75%. But there's something that's kind of raised right along this edge right here that says do not jump start motors if charge is 25% or less. So technically we could jump start the van right now because it's over 25%, but I am going to go ahead and charge this guy up before I add it to the van fully. Now what else do we have up here? Well, we have our compressor. Oh my goodness. Wow. That was loud, but also it is charged and on. And just turning it on, it didn't go down any, so that's pretty cool. But you can actually adjust how much that you want to put into your tires on this little screen right here with the pressure. So that's pretty cool also. Now, a couple of other things that we have, we have a couple of lights here, which could be used as security lights. Now, they're not super, super big, but you could use these also as like a little flashlight if need be. And then there's something called a starter port right here. So this is where we're going to plug in our next item, I believe. Let's look around to see if there's anything else. Nope, that's it. Except for on the back. And this right here is what would inflate my tires to a safer air pressure. Now I have noticed that with my compressor I currently have, I've only had to use it twice. And one of the times I had to use it was because I needed to actually air down my tire just a little bit because it was overfilled from a service that I had. And the other time that I did I was experiencing extreme cold temperatures and because it was cold for several days my tire pressure gauge was showing that they were a bit low so I had to inflate just a tiny bit just for safety purposes but this is very convenient to have and I like the fact that it just wraps right back in here and easily stores so that we can have it in one brick as opposed to two separate units. Now this was the other thing that was in the box. This is just a little pouch and in Inside this pouch, you can unzip it and you'll notice there are jumper cables in here. So I normally carry some pretty hefty ones, but these are actually designed for the unit itself. So I might still carry those loose ones. So if I need a car to car jump or if I want to jump someone else, I can. But this plugs directly into that unit and then you just sit it onto your post just like you would a normal jump starter. And then you turn it on and it's supposed to help you jump start your battery. So this is pretty user friendly, but there's also a manual. So if you've never jump started your car before and you don't know how to do that, it gives you diagrams let me show you what those look like. But first, let's see what else is in this bag. I hear something. I know there has to be more. Oh, there is. There's a longer tire hose. So that's kind of cool right here. Again, this has a full on nozzle on it so that you can adjust it and really cap it down better. And then there's this charging cord because you can charge this off of 12 volt, which is very nice. Meaning that while I'm driving down the road, I could technically be charging this so that it's ready should I ever need it. And it's super easy and convenient for me to do that that way. I don't have to do it whenever I'm in a sticks and bricks. But if I do want to charge this at base camp before I head out, or if I do want to plug it into a power station I still can with a more traditional plug that they have also included. But there's one other thing in this bag, and I'm not sure what it is, but um, oh, very cool. This actually has 
all of the different random things that you could use to inflate other things other than just, you know, your tire. So it looks like there is a thing that I could probably use for inflating like an air mattress or a basketball or a few other things also. So altogether, this bag was filled with goodies. But let's get to that manual now. Okay, as we look at the manual, of course, this is the Adore Trip, and this is the 2500A compressor. And as we go inside, there's a QR code where you can register for your warranty. And then also, as you can see, their official website for any questions and also for contact information. But additionally, they have all of their social media over here also. So if you do have any questions, it's super convenient. I'm just probably gonna keep this inside of the bag just in case I ever need to reach out to them because this will be just super convenient and easy. Next up, we have a list of all the things that were included. And here you can get a better look at some of those little fittings right there. Now, if you're watching this and you don't have a small van, you might be thinking this might not be large enough for you, but this is rated actually for all of these different things. And you might notice there's a few interesting ones on here. Here's a larger RV and also a small boat. They have a big boy truck here, and then they have some inflatable things, which would take a lot of air to uh, inflate, definitely. But this is kind of why I like to look at the manual because it really does tell you more about the full capacity of the item. Getting to know your device is so important and so that's why every time I get something new for the van, I make sure to take it fully out, look at all of the parts, and then read the book. The book is so important, but also keeping this book inside of the pouch, even though it might seem like an unnecessary step, is so handy because if I need this later on, because I don't plan on needing it all the time, I can just flip through and then find out what exactly I need to do before using it. So that's super handy, but there's a little bit more in here that I wanna show you. If you personally have never had to jumpstart your vehicle before, Right here, steps to jumpstart, page eight. It has photos and also text to tell you exactly how to make this thing work. And I really appreciate this because despite the fact that there are millions of motorists who drive cars every single day, you would be surprised how many people have never jumpstarted a car, how many people have never inflated or changed a tire. There are so many of these things that are just not skills that people have ever had to um, do before. And so having this is super handy. I think that the more that companies make things user friendly, the more that they're allowing us to use these things, yes, but also they're showing us and giving us the tools as to how to use them correctly, which keeps us out of harm's way when it comes to all the bad things that can happen. Now, if you've never jump started a car before, you may not know you're not supposed to click the little things together. They just look super fun, but that can actually be very bad and it says that here. So there's one of many things that are learning and teaching tools for us with inside the manual. That's why it's so important just to give it a once over and then, you know, save it for a rainy day. But there's a couple other things. Let's look at them. How to inflate your tire correctly. That's in here too, again, with pictures. Very, very nice. So even though I have done both of these skills before, it's always nice to have a reference just in case. And if I ever decide that I really, really love this and want to gift it to someone else for their preparedness kit for their van, then that will be helpful to them too. So I really appreciate Adore Trip for this because this is probably one of the most comprehensive manuals that I've seen for this particular kind of unit, which is part of the reason why I was excited to uh, share this with you guys because I think it's a real value, not only for me with jump starting the van in those weird tricky situations, but also for you guys if you're needing something for your van to keep you safe because it's important. Another page here that I think is great is the question and answer page because it has a few questions on here that I know many people will be asking. For example, can this start a large truck? No. It is capable of jump starting household cars and 12 volt battery equipped items only. Or how about this one? How to switch off the unit. It will shut off automatically 2.5 minutes after it stops working. You don't need to switch it off manually at all. And then on this page also, it talks a little bit more about the cycling of this particular item and how you can see that it will drop off. So for example, it says the item uses five segment displays to mark the power level. Now, is this gonna solve every single problem I have with my van in the future? 
adventure? Absolutely not, but it is going to give me a little bit of ease while traveling alone. Because sometimes whenever you're traveling alone, even if you have jumper cables, even if you have all of those things, being on the side of the road and having to be at the mercy of a total stranger can be a little bit scary. So I would rather at least give myself the benefit of the doubt to be able to fix my issue first before having to pick up my phone and call AAA or having a stranger come up and be like, hey, can I jump you? Because, uh, you know, sometimes whenever somebody wants to jump your van, they're cool and it's awesome and it's, yay, we're going to fix this. And sometimes they mean, hey, can, can I actually jump you? And I don't want that. So I would prefer to give myself that first line of defense, especially in the situation where I showed you earlier in the video when I was in the rainforest. I did have someone who was with me and that was great. And because of that, because I have jumper cables, I would have been okay. However, when Riley left and went to go and get her computer worked on and I was there by myself, if I would have had an incident where I absolutely had to go to town for an emergency or something like that, I didn't have great cell service to call AAA or anything, and I would need something that I could do right then and there. And this will get me there. This will get me back on the road more quickly and by myself versus having to be at the mercy of someone else. So with that said, let's put everything into the bag. Of course, the cords are already inside living and there's a little pocket right here on the front. So that's where I'm going to put the manual itself so that it's easy to access and doesn't get all messed up. It also has a nice zipper which keeps it protected, meaning that it's not going to flail out and get lost somewhere in the floor of the van never to be seen again but now I'm gonna go ahead and roll this little cord back in and I think that the unit will fit perfectly in here with the cords but let's find out okay let's see does the unit fit in the bag with the cords it does, it does, it fits, it fits perfectly. It does fit. Now I do need to move the cords around just a little bit so that I can zip it fully, but it definitely all fits into the bag. And then the nice thing about this is it has a nice carrying strap so that we can get this out with ease. If I need to take this into charge at some place, it just looks like a little bag. It's already super convenient. It already has all the cords. It's ready already. So I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and plug this into base camp and let it charge up so that whenever I bring it and introduce it back to the van it's ready to go already. I hope today's video is super helpful to you guys. I know that this is going to be an amazing help to me as I'm traveling. I'm getting ready to hit the road again and you guys are still catching up on some of my adventures so I hope you're enjoying the ride. Until next time guys, bye!